Hey everyone, it's Bobby from Decoding here, and in this course, we'll be playing around with cryptocurrency. So we'll be building a decentralized app or a D app from the ground up in Django that lets users exchange cryptocurrency for goods and services. So think of it as an e-commerce app, but instead of using US dollars, we're using crypto. The one we're using is HBAR. The reason I've selected HBAR instead of uh, Bitcoin, XRP, Solana, um, Ethereum, or any one of the other 4,000 cryptocurrencies that are out there is because HBAR is the native cryptocurrency for Hedera Hashgraph. And they are the newest and latest and greatest DLT. And I felt it was best suited for this kind of decentralized app. So if you look on my screen, you'll see the app. It start, it's a homepage here. It allows somebody to sign in or sign up. So we'll quickly sign up. We'll go bobby at diddemo.com. Fred Fred one, Fred Fred one, and show pass, make sure it's correct. Happy days, Bobby and Stearman will go one high streets, Bedford, Cams, CB6 to an H, all random, and then we'll click sign up. What that's doing is it's signing up that user. So that user is now in the database, but what it's also doing is it's making an API call to Hedera Hashgraph, it's creating an account, and it's setting them up with a, a balance of HBAR. Normally in a production environment, that user would add their HBAR wallet, which would have their own HBAR that they own in it, and they'd be using their balance to buy goods and services. But as this is a, in development, we're in a sandbox, we're in the test net, we're giving them some HBAR so we can play with it. So that's what it's done. It will take us through to account and you can say here, see here that Bobby at decoding or diddemo.com has got a balance of 1000 H bar. So also got a cart. So if we go to the cart, rather than this having a load of products, having SKUs and managing stocks and things like that, I've just hard coded in a few products. We've got shirt, pants and shoes. We've also got the denominations of H bar. So a millibar or 1000 millibars is one H bar. 100 million tiny bars is one H bar. Okay, so it's good because you could have, let's say, 1,250 millibar would be 1.25 H bar, and that allows you to then price products in a certain way. So I've got 6,000 millibars, so that's six H bar. Now the transaction will have a fee. So when I click this, it will reduce the balance one one 1,000 by six, and a tra and a um, a transaction fee also. So if I now click OK, you can see that it's dropped it and it's dropped it more than just six. It's just a little bit more as well because that's a transaction fee. The transaction fee is currently 0.001 US dollars. So it's very, very low. And you can also see it, it doesn't take very long. So this is the equivalent of using your contactless at a shop. You ping it, it says authorized, you take your goods and bugger off home. Click pants, this is four and a half H bar. And now that appears. So that's all we're doing. This is the app that we're going to be building in this course. Okay. It's also got sign out as well. So for the rest of this course, what we'll be doing is we'll be signing up to testnet on Hedera. So portal.hedera.com, getting the API credentials. We'll be um, setting up our machine. So environment variables and such. We'll be using Django to build a back end. We'll be using HTML, CSS, and JavaScript to do the front end. And we'll be testing the app to make sure it looks and works the same as it did just then. So that's it. Thanks for watching this part. I look forward to seeing you in section one. Thank you, bye-bye. Hey, and welcome to the first section in this tutorial. In this section, we'll have a deeper dive on Hedera Hashgraph. So we'll understand a little bit more about who they are and what they do. We'll also be visiting their portal and creating a profile for their test net and activating some API keys. So their test net can be looked at as a sandbox or a development environment because we are doing this tutorial in development. If we were to move it to production, we would use their main net. Okay, so if we look at my screen now, it opens straight up on hedera.com. I've also got portal.hedera.com as well because we'll be using that shortly. But we'll just fly through their website so we can have a better understanding of why I've used Hedera Hashgraph opposed to any other public ledger for this tutorial. Um, I really do believe in their technology. So I'll read through this in a second, but this is what I find uh, fascinating actually. So 
Hedera Hashgraph, this is the reason why I've used them in this tutorial. It's because it's the third generation public ledger. Everything previous to Hedera Hashgraph will be classed as either generation one or generation two. First generation was Bitcoin. It was launched in 2009 and they pioneered decentralized infrastructure. It says it right here in this paragraph, right? So they pioneered and paved the way for everything that come after them. They really did. Without Bitcoin, who knows where we'd be now. So um, fantastic. But if you look at some of these credentials, you can see that transaction speed, very, very slow. Average fee, very, very high. How long, it takes an awful long time to, um, uh, for a transaction to be confirmed. And also the energy, it's been a lot of press about how um, energy consuming cryptocurrencies are in the press recently. Um, and you can see here that uh, 885 kilowatt hours energy used per transaction. It's an awful lot, right? It's because of all of the computer, um, computing power it takes to actually make a transaction uh, reach uh, confirmation. Okay, so that's generation one. You then say, it then says here that Ethereum would be classed as second generation, brought program, programmability, okay? So vast improvements, a lot more transactions per second. Uh, the cost has dropped a little bit. The speed has improved and the energy has improved, okay? So, you know, as things have moved along from 2009, things have got better. However, if you look at third generation, now these, these would both be a blockchain technologies. Now, Hedera is Hedera Hashgraph. It's a Hashgraph technology. It's a very, very different public ledger. It works very differently. We won't go through the ins and outs of the technology, um, but um, I do believe in it. I, I, I think it's fantastic. And the numbers speak for themselves. Transactions per second, 10,000. So huge, huge improvement. Average fee, 0.0001 US dollars per, per fee, per transaction, which is crazy low. Um, we've then got the uh, transaction speed, three to five seconds. It still seems quite slow, but it's not, right? That's very, very fast. And keep in mind that this is three to five seconds to consensus, okay, to finality. So it's very, very fast. And also the energy use per transaction, look at this it has gone from 885 kilowatt hours to 0.00017 kilowatt hours. So crazy, right? So that's why I'm using Hedera Hashgraph in this tutorial. It's, um, you know, it's a technology that is far ahead of everything else in the um, uh, public ledger um, sector. So there we have it, Hedera Hashgraph. It's owned or Hedera is owned and governed by the world's leading organizations. So these guys own and run currently, currently own and run Hedera. We've got Google, massive names, IBM, LG, all EDF, all of these companies currently own and govern Hedera. Okay, so um, Hedera is the most used enterprise grade public network for you to make your digital world exactly as it should be yours. HBAR is the native energy efficient cryptocurrency of Hedera that powers the decentralized economy. Whether you're a startup or enterprise, a creator or consumer, Hedera goes beyond blockchain for developers to create the next era of fast, fair, and secure applications. There we have it. That's why I'm using Hedera Hashgraph in this tutorial. Let's move on to creating a profile. So portal.hedera.com register. You will need to register um, an account here to um, get the API credentials. So I'm going to use bobby at diddemo.com. I'm gonna have my password in here. There we have it, country of residence. I'm in the UK. United Emirates, no, it's not that. United Kingdom, there we have it. Uh, country of citizenship, United Kingdom again. And role, developer, sign up. Okay, I'll save that. Uh, we've got an email, so I'm just gonna pause the recording quickly.
Okay, I had to use a different email address because that one was uh, inactive. Um, so once you've got, received your email and you've activated your account, you can then add your credentials. There we have it, confirm. Create a testnet account. Okay, so you can select here preview net or a main net, but we're in testnet, right? So let's create account. Um, okay, this is gonna take a second. Wonderful, okay, so it's come up with an account ID, a public key, and a private key. Okay, so we will be coming back here um, and visiting portal.hedera.com in another section when we're saving these credentials to our environment variables, okay? So that is the end of this section. You will have to follow this to uh, follow along with this tutorial. So set up a profile on uh, portal.hedera.com get your credentials, and then we'll move into section two. Thank you very much. Hey everyone, and welcome to the second section in this tutorial. In this section, we will be installing Java. Seems strange, as this is a Python and Django tutorial, but we need Java, and I'll go through why in a few moments. And also, we'll be setting up some environment variables. So we'll be saving our Java um, path to our environment variables, along with the testnet API credentials that we got in the last section. So let's jump straight into it. If you look at the uh, my screen here, it opens again up on Hedera.com. Uh, what we need to do is we need to go into Devs and Hedera SDK. Now I've got three SDKs managed by Hedera and a couple of community ones. The ones managed by Hedera are Java, JavaScript, and Go. The community ones are for .NET. Now, there is no, currently there is no Python SDK, but there is a wrapper that allows us to work with the Java SDK. And what it does, and we'll go through this in another section, it converts classes written in Java to Python classes. So it allows us to write Python code and use the Java SDK. So it's very, very handy. And um, so yeah, what we need to do is we need to install Java so that we can actually work with this SDK. And the way you do that is you visit oracle.com. Let's go accept all. If you go to oracle.com, go into, um, actually go into index there, no products. And we'll go to Java. And then what we'll do is we will, where are we? Uh, software. Java, learn more about Java. Download Java now, sorry, there we go. Uh, no, Oracle JDK, that's what we want. So if you go to Oracle JDK and then go JDK download, what it'll do, it'll come up with all of the different options. Now it depends on what machine you're using. I'm using a Windows machine. So what I'll need is the Windows X64 installer, which is currently 16.0.2. Now I've already got 16.0.1 installed on my machine. So I'm not going to click that. Okay, so, so the version I've got on my machine is already okay. But if you click that and follow the installation process, it should save J, uh, Java into a directory such as this, which would be C drive, program files, Java, and then you'll have the version. This is, like I say, I've got 16.0.1 on my machine already. And in there, you've then got bin, conf, include. We need bin, server, and we need to remember this path, okay? So we need this path in a few moments. But go ahead and download Java. Let me open it up back on the screen. There we go. Um, down, go ahead and download this, get it all installed on your machine, and then we'll set up some environment variables, okay? Okay, so let's open up our system environment variables. You click the little magnifying glass at the bottom left of your screen on Windows, and you search for environment. Sorry, that's probably just outside of the screen, but you search environment, and you'll come up with edit the system environment variables. That's what you need. You don't wanna just be editing environment variables, because that will be just for you. So you click on that, and it'll open up this screen. And if it doesn't, just click on environment variables on the options that you have on the previous screen. And what you want here is, there'll be some blurred out by the way, because these are my API keys that I use, but you'll be using your own. Java Home, you need to add this into your environment variables. So you click new and you add the credentials here and okay, but I've already done it. So you need it called Java Home. 
and the path is the path to your version, which is here, okay? So in mine is program files, Java, and there. That is what you need to save in your environment variables. You will also need the path to bin and server, which is here, okay? You will need that path also. So environment variables, if you then go to path, and you can see here I've got Java home. So it's a percentage mark, Java home, which is the variable we've just created, then slash bin slash server, which is this here, okay? So that's all you need for Java. Do the same for your own personal one as well. So in path here, you can see I've got Java home, bin server. So do that also. So system and variables, user and variables, done. Next thing you need to do is you need to add the operator ID and operator key into system ID, uh, variables. Now the operator ID is your account number on hedera.com. So let's visit that quickly. We'll go portal.hedera.com. I might still be logged in, I am. Okay, so the account ID is this one here. So you'd be copying that and you'll be adding it into here. So it'd be called and then you will be saving it here. And, oh, I've copied the wrong bit. Copy and paste. And then you click okay. Okay, but I've already done that, so you don't need to do that. And your same goes for the operator key. Now the operator key will be your private key. Okay, so get that in there, call it operator key and save. And that's it, that's all we need to do. Uh, we have uh, downloaded Java. We've also added all of the credentials into our environment variable. So we are now good to go. So in the next section, we will start building the back end of our app. Thanks for watching. See you in a couple of seconds in section three. Bye bye. Hey and welcome back to the third part of this Django Hedera tutorial. In this section we're going to build out a new Django project so that will mean starting a project, creating some apps and also we'll be installing the Java SDK wrapper for Python into the project. This will allow us to communicate to the Hedera API and create an account and transfer HBAR from one account to another. So we'll be uh, building some models and some views and what have you. So let's jump straight into it. If you look at my screen, it opens straight up on a CMD. So because I've got a virtual environment wrapper installed on my machine, I can just use a uh, command make virtual ENV. So we need to create a virtual environment for this new project and we'll call this Hedera Django demo. There we go. Right, so now we've got the virtual environment fired up. We know that because it's uh, in brackets here. So this all depends on how you've got your machine configured. I've got virtual environment env-win installed on my Windows machine, which means I can uh, create virtual environments in this way, right? So now um, I can deactivate if I choose to, and then I'd say work on, which is another command for a virtual env wrapper. And we can just put Hedera Django, uh, what do we call it, demo. Okay, so now we've got that fired up, we now need to install Django. So pip install Django, and that will install the most recent version of Django. So uh, what is it now? It's Django 3.2.7, apparently. So that's the first time I've installed that. It will take a second or two, and then once that's finished, Oh, this always comes up. Every time I do a new project, I need to install a new pip version. Just copy the command and dump it in there and get the new, latest version of pip installed. Great, so what we now need to do is install the Java SDK wrapper for Python. And if I open up my screen, it's here. So it's called Hedera-SDK-PY. So we're currently on version 2.0.14, and it has been improved since the earlier tutorials that I put in place, um, because you can now install it just using pip install Hedera-SDK-PY. Um, it's got a bit of instruction here on how to use it, 
And uh, so in the previous section, we installed Java. So this is why, essentially, we're using this wrapper and we must use ja uh, a Java um, JDK and it needs to be above at least 11. So that's why we installed it in the last section. We've added to our environment variables. So we essentially, we followed these instructions in the last section, right? And with this comes some examples. I've got to open in another tab here. So this tutorial is loosely based on some of these. We are, will be using um, create account or where is it? We've got get client here. So that's one of the, that is one of the core pieces of this project. So we need to connect to Hedera and we use this code to do that. So um, you get these examples. There's a lot of them on here. You've got um, get account balance, get client, delete file, delete account. So the, use this as a reference point, please. It's fantastic. And I've used this for a few of the apps that I've built recently. So uh, yeah, you've got transfer tokens and so on and so forth. So this is the uh, command we need to now take, which is pip install Hedera SDKPY. We'll dump it in there. And that is all we're going to need in this project. You can see that it's installed also PYJNIUS. That is a library that allows us uh, to communicate with Java code. So it takes Java classes and converts them to Python classes. And that's what this wrapper does. It also installs six for us as well. Okay, so first thing we want to do is pip freeze. I oh, know we don't. Let's start a project. So now what we can do is Django admin start project. And we'll call this Hedera Django demo. Okay, so we can now CD into Hedera Django demo. And this will now have, uh, this directory will now have all of the necessary files for Django for us to get this project up and running. So if we just open up my um, directory here. You can see here that we're in a Hedera Django demo. It has a manage.py file. And then in here is the, uh, the conf. You've got the settings and the URLs, okay? So what we can do now is we can do a pip freeze and we will create a requirements.txt file. Okay, if I go back in here now, it should have a requirements file. If I open that up, it's got all of the, if you can see that there. So these are all of the libraries that are required to get this project up and running. You can see we've got 2.0.14 in the Hedera SDK BY, and this PYJNIUS is 1.4.0. Okay, so that's all we should need to get this project up and running. So what I'll now do is I will open up Sublime Text. There we go. And what I'll do is just make that a little bit bigger. Okay, so this is Sublime Text. This is the project. So the first thing that we need to do is we need to change the settings a little bit. Actually, that's a little bit too big, isn't it? Actually, before we jump into this, let's go back in the command prompt here. And what we haven't done is we haven't started any apps. So if we are now in a Dara Django demo directory, we now have access to manage.py. So we can just go Python manage.py start app and we'll call this users. And we'll do another one, manage.py we'll call this API. Great stuff. Do you know what, whilst I'm messing around, no, let's keep it as it is. Right, okay, let's open up Sublime Text now. So this is settings.py. Uh, we don't need to mess around. We're only in uh, development, so we don't need to mess around with this secret key. If we were in production, then we'd, um, we'd remove that from the project and use uh, decouple or something like that. So in your installed apps, what we need to do is we need to add the new apps that we've just created. API, so you can see here we've got API here, and we've got users there, okay? Then what we want, no changes here. Templates, we won't bother with the changes there. Database can just stay as the SQLite 3. Uh, or no, none of those. And we can just change this to GB, because I'm in the UK. UTC, Static, right, yeah, so 
because this app, as in the intro, has logos and um, loading up some JavaScript and CSS, we need to do something with the statics, uh, URL, static files. And to save me typing it all out, I'm just gonna copy it from my other screen here. I've done this 101 times before in other projects and it just gets a little bit repetitive. So what we need is a static files DERS and we've got os-path.join. Ah, oh, that's one thing I need to do. I need to import os which is operating system, right? Because we're accessing it here. So static files does os.path join base directory static and media. This is this will um, is just the configuration we need to access static and media files in this project. We technically don't need media because we're not saving any images, but we'll have it in there for, for giggles. Save that, let's go to URLs. So what we need to do is we need to add include to this first import. So we're using that for the uh, URL patterns in a sec. We need from django.conf import settings. And then lastly, we need from django.conf.urls.static import static. There we have it. Right, great. So uh, what I'll do, yeah, do you know what? I'll just copy this across as well. So we'll keep admin in there, uh, but we also need the URL path for users and API. So it's path and then put include API uh, URLs, and then we have namespace API. See, api.urls, we haven't created those files yet, but we'll do that in a second, uh, else we're gonna have some errors. <laughs> errors. We have some errors and then we've got users.urls as well so this will allow us to actually configure the urls in both of these apps and we've got if settings.debug and then we add these url patterns for the static files so um, static settings.static url document root um, i won't do a deep dive on that um, i've done this in lots of videos before but this is referencing the, the, the settings that were just added here okay and that just allows us to configure um, the static files so what we'll do we'll Add a new folder and we'll call this static. Great, and then what we'll do in the API, we will add a new file and we'll save this as urls.py. And we'll do exactly the same for users, just so that we're all on top of it. .py. Great. So if you can remember right at the start when I did the uh, walkthrough of this actual app, we had the functionality for a user just to sign up. Uh, we had an account page and we had a like a demo cart. So that's what we're gonna hold in, or most of that is gonna be held in the users uh, app here. So we're gonna need some, we're gonna need a model because essentially the model translates to a database. So this is where the user will sign up and their sign up credentials will be saved into a model. So I will just simply pick up what I've got in my other screen and dump it in here. Okay, so this is going to be a model called user profile and this essentially extends the built-in user model from uh, Django. So that's why we're importing Django contrib of models here, import user, right? So uh, the class called user profile and the way we link it is we're using a one-to-one -one field. So it's this field here, okay? So uh, as a user is created, we use a signal and that signal receives the signal from the user profile uh, and it then subsequently creates a user profile. So the signal comes from the user model with the built-in user model and it subsequently creates a user profile. So in here we've got uh, char fields for telephone address, town, county, postcode, country and is active. So this is, um, it's, I have this in most of my models. Likewise, I have updated and timestamp as well. So these are kind of hangovers from other tutorials that I've done. We have got um, ACC. So that's gonna be you, that is the ACC, that is the Hedera account number. That is the public key and the private key for this user when they sign up. Now in a production environment, the user would sign up and then add their account ID. 
uh, to the uh, to their user profile. That is how they, or they would add it when they're creating a payment to pay for some goods and services, but we're not doing that in this tutorial. So as a user signs up, it fictitiously creates an account, uh, saves those credentials to the user profile, so you can then literally just select a product and then pay for it using HBAR. But in a real production environment, you would have the ability for a user to add their own account ID and a public key potentially. So this is models. And that's all we're going to do in the user's profile. All we now do is we create some forms, okay? So we will be using Django forms, but we'll be Ajaxifying them. So the forms are um, submitted asynchronously. So what we'll do, we will create a new file and we'll call this forms. We also need to create the um, signals py as well. Actually, looking at this, looking at my uh, other screen here, it looks like we're actually not using the um, signals. Um, so we'll be doing a lot of this in the front end. And the reason we're not using signals is because we're creating a head and Hedera account using the uh, a function view, function-based view. So we're not going to create the user profile until the uh, Hedera account has been produced. That's why. So we're not using signals at all. So forms, copy and paste across. Right. Okay. So. Oh, I do apologize. There we go. Right, okay. So if you can see this, we're using the built-in forms, so the auth forms with uh, Django. So this does a lot of the heavy lifting. So we're using the user creation form and authentication form. So you get a lot of um, a lot of the hard work is done by Django for this. So you can see here the user form here that we've got, class user form. We're pulling in um, user creation form, which is this. And we've got first name, last name, username, password one, and password two. So these are fields that are in the built-in user model. Okay, so this is what we'll be using in our uh, user creation. But because in the demo, if you remember, in, in the first part of this tutorial, we were actually asking for a bit more information, such as telephone address, town, county, postcode. We, um, sorry, that's another code that's not needed. Um, we need two forms. So we've got a user creation form here, and we've got a user profile form, which is just a standard model form here. And the combination of the two will allow us to sign up a user. So in this model form, we're just pulling in telephone, address, town, county. Um, and it's just forms, char field. You can see here that I'm trying with the max length, max length 15 here in 100. I'm matching those across to the models that I've just created. So telephone, um, so telephone here is max length 15 max length 100 on address okay so that's all I'm trying to do on the uh, form there next you've got the auth form which inherits from the authentication form and that's just taking a an username and password and that's how we're signing in the user so they're the three forms that we're using in this project user form user profile form and auth form now this code will be on github so uh, I'm walking you through this but by all means, have a little uh, delve in my GitHub repository. Link will be in the description below, and you can see the code there and and, and have a tinker at at, um, at will. So that is the forms.py file. Let's create some URLs. So let's go in here and just copy that across. Okay, so we're bringing in. Um, path and we're bringing in URL and we're also importing all of the views that we haven't actually created yet so there's no problem but we will be creating function based views for sign in sign up and sign out and we'll also be creating a, a template view called account view in uh, the views.py file okay so these are the four URLs that we're using for users so we've got a sign in a sign up a sign out and then it's kind of a, 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 a an authenticated user homepage, which in this case would be called account. So it would be forward slash account. Okay, so there are URLs. We now need to make these views. So we need to go into views.py. And again, let's just copy this across. The reason I'm doing this is because if you use, watched any of my videos uh, in the past, you can see my typing is uh, terrible at best. And uh, this saves a lot of time and I can just walk you through the code and hopefully you can understand what I'm trying to achieve rather than just me coding along and it can take a hell of a lot longer for you to get the same output. So let's have a look at views. 
We've got a hell of a lot of imports here. So, um, and normally when we have views, you will be importing render, redirect, and reverse. We are using template view and method decorators because the account page you have to be logged in. So that's why we've got a decorate login required here. We're bringing in a built in user model, we're bringing in messages. Um, we are bringing in encoding force bytes, force type. I don't actually think we need that. We don't need that. I will remove those. That's for verification. We don't need those. Log in, log out, and authenticate from auth. Uh, we've got make password, which is something that we're going to do as we're signing somebody up. We've got the HTTP response, JSON response, and then settings, and also import JSON. Do I need that? I don't think I actually need that now. Uh, no, I don't. Right, okay, there's unnecessary. So I was uh, jigging around with this project before I actually uh, put the camera, uh, sorry, the screen share on. So mix-ins, we've got form errors and we've got redirect params. We'll create that file in a second. Actually, we'll create it now, but we'll um, add the code in a second. So save as, and this will be mixins.py. Back to views. And then we've got forms. They're the forms we just created. Uh, API, we're going to create those in a few moments. And then we've got the model invoicing, which we haven't created yet. So at the, state, the start of this views py file, we've got a, a variable called results and a message. The reason I have this at the top is because we're referencing this um, in Ajax calls. So if there is an error in the call, then it defaults to a result message of error and a message saying something went wrong. Okay, so they're kind of... Um, their variables that we're calling throughout this uh, view. We've then got a function, function-based, function-based view. So sign up, sign in, sign out. And then this is the class-based view for account view. So let's jump straight into it. So sign up. So we are, so if a user is already authenticated, it redirects that user to account, right? So that's just a couple of lines of code to make sure that users can't go to sign up if they're already signed up. We then instantiate two forms. So one of them is U-Form and one is um, User Profile Form. They're the two forms that I was talking about a few moments ago. So that is the uh, user form here that uses the user creation form and the user profile form. Okay, so we instantiate in there and then we've got an if request is Ajax. So we're Ajaxifying these form requests. So we're submitting them on the front end using jQuery. We're processing the submission using Django. That's how we're doing it. And that way it's asynchronous, so nothing needs to reload on the page. So if request is Ajax, then what we do, we get the data from the request for the form. And same again for user profile. So U form and UP form now have been, all of the data has been added to them. So if the forms are valid, so if the U form is valid and UP form is valid, then we save the user form. So um, because we're using the user creation form in forms, because we're using this, all you need to do is save the form. You don't need to do anything fancy pants. Just save the form and that will create a user, right? So commit equals false. So, right, user profile. If we save and commit equals false, we can then add the user that we've just created to the user profile. Because it's a one-to-one, -one, it has to have the user added to the user field on the user profile. We then save. That's instead of using signals. We've then got user is active true. User.email equals user.username. That's because the username in this uh, instance is actually an email. That's just an easy way of getting around it. It's probably not a, an effective way in a production environment, but that's what I'm doing in this app. And then we save the user. So these few lines of code here, they're creating a user, creating a user profile, linking the two and saving them. Uh, we then call a class here that we haven't created. So we're calling this class to create a Hedera client. Uh, we'll be doing that in a few seconds. And then we've got, so the result is success and we post a message saying your profile is now active. If there is an error, then we're calling a class called form errors, which we haven't created yet. That will be in mixins. So the idea of that is it will be um, uh, producing a message um, bespoke to the type of error that's occurred in the form, but I'll go through that in a second. We then create a dictionary called data, post the result and a message as keywords, and we then return a JSON response and pass through data. If it isn't Ajax, then we make a context dictionary, we pass through the empty form, the empty form, and then we render 
sign up HTML, which we haven't created. We'll do that in the next section. Sign in. So that's the signing up. That is the process of a user signing up. Okay. We then got the sign in view. So signing in, slightly different. Well, actually, no different here at all. So if somebody's already authenticated, somebody tries to visit sign in, it just redirects them to account. We instantiate the um, auth form. Again, if request is Ajax, we get the form and we add the data from the request.post. If the form is valid, then what we do, we clean the data, which is the username and the password, and we authenticate them. So the user equals authenticate. So this is a built-in method that Django has that allows us to post request, the username and the password. If user is not none, so if the user is fine and dandy after this, then we log in the user. So we authenticate the user. So this is what logs them in. We post the message you are now logged in and a result to success. This will be posted back to the JavaScript um, or the jQuery call that we make, the Ajax call that we make. And it depends on the, it, whether the result is success or error, we will post this message and redi uh, redirect the user to the account page. If there's an error, we call form errors again and post the form. Okay, same again for data and same again as if it's not Ajax or if it's a get request, we post the form. Happy days. Sign out. Okay, so this we just call the, the method logout that becomes built into Django and that will sign out the user that is currently authenticated and redirect them to sign in. Okay, so they are the three views we're using to sign a user up, to sign them in, to sign them out. Lastly, we've got the, um, the accounts view. So this is the accounts page when you've redirected, when you're authenticated. We're using a method decorator and we're posting, we're adding login required. So this means that uh, only authenticated users can view this page, which is exactly what we want, right? So the template will be called user slash account, which we haven't built yet. And then we've got a, we call the get context data method. This allows us to add information to the context that is posted through or rendered to the HTML file. So uh, we need to get the HBAR balance. So this is the balance of the user. So we'll be calling a class called Hedera data and we'll be adding balance to the context. So there's a, there's a method called balance in that um, a class there. And then we'll be getting the transactions. So we'll be getting the invoices model which we haven't created yet and added the transactions to context. So they are the views in users. And I believe that's it actually. So we need to add some admin. So this is by adding everything to admin here, it'll allow us to view the information in the Django admin page interface. So we'll be able to log in as a super user and we'll be able to see the user profiles. Okay, so that's what that's doing there. And I believe that's it for users. Mixins, no, we need to do mixins. Quickly, so dump that in here. So important settings, redirect URL encode and six. Okay, so that's what we need to make these two classes work. Uh, we are not using redirect params in this actually. Or are we? Or are we? No, we're not. So we don't need that. Again, that's a hangover. Actually, it's a handy piece of code. So what this does is it's a class that I, I use in some of my apps. So this allows me to fire a, a, a URL and some uh, keywords and yeah, so some keywords and a URL to a class. And what it will do, it will use URL in code to create a parameter string that can be appended to a URL, which is really, really handy when you're using things like affiliate links, when you're um, using labels and things like that. So it's really, really handy, but we're not using it in this tutorial, so we'll remove it. And we will move those to, what, do we actually need any of those? I don't think we do. No, we don't, right. So we just got form errors, right? So. This is a function called form errors, and this is what we use to create a string, a message, if there's an error in a form. So every time there's a, a form error, we call form errors, and it just creates a nice string that can we render to the front end so the user can see what's going on. So we have a blank string messages, and then for F in arguments that we pass it through, so the form that we pass through, we get the arguments. If 
so if f dot errors then message equals f dot errors as text so it keeps adding to that string return a message that's all we're doing in mixins there so that's users next we want api so let's go to models we start with models and we want to create a model called invoicing so again, timestamp, we always have the timestamp, which is quite handy actually, because um, the important thing we use in Hedera is uh, because we're, uh, every single um, transaction in Hedera in, um, when it reaches consensus has a timestamp, which is important. So we wanna know in what order things are made or, or, or what, when the transactions are completed. So we take that timestamp and we add it to this model, okay? User, that is a foreign key to the user model, the built-in user model in Django got a transaction ID. So again, when that transaction is complete on Hedera, we will get the timestamp and we'll get an ID. And that is paramount, we need that. Get the description, so this will be the description of the product and the amount. So this is the amount in tiny bars. I'll go through the denominations in a short, short moment, okay? We've then got a little function here, amount conversion. So we're converging the amount and, multi and times in it by 100,000. This is to do with the de denominations because uh, HBAR is the native cryptocurrency for their Hashgraph, but um, the cryptocurrency has a whole bunch of different denominations. So you have millibar, you've got uh, tiny bar, mini bar, all sorts of different bits and pieces, but I'll show you that in a second. Transaction fee conversion. Again, we multiply the fee. Actually, we, we're not using that. We don't need the fee. And then sell string. So, so we've done the string and this is what, what is returned. It's the username or the user profile. Save that. We've then got mixins. Do that quickly. New file. Save as. Mixins.py. And we'll be doing that in a second. Sorry, I just want to make sure I'm doing the right things in the right order. Let's get invoicing in the admin page. So again, we are registering the new invoice model to admin. So this will allow us to view the invoices in the admin panel. So we're creating a uh, class here. This will show the ID, the user and the timestamp when we actually on the front page of uh, the admin page. And then we register it and we pass through invoicing and invoicing admin. Save that. Let's add some URLs, shall we? URLs. So in here, we will need one for cart. If you remember in the demo right at the start, there was a cart. Um, this is where we haven't got any products. I mean, I could have spent a few days building this uh, this application, but I just wanted this to be a quick demo. Uh, so the, it's kind of, it's hard coded. So we've got one or two products or maybe three products in the cart itself and the user can click one or two or three of them or whatever and, and make the payment. And we have another URL here, which is the Ajax call. This is actually the call that makes the payment itself. So we make that call in the JavaScript from the front end and it goes, it does all the fancy stuff in the background, um, makes the call to Hedera, transfers HBAR from one account to another. So that's why that URL is there. We then have the views, copy, and I'll dump that in here also. So bringing in render, template view, method decorated, login required. This is the same as the user app that we created because we need these views to be only accessed by those that are authenticated, we're bringing in settings and JSON response. Then for mixins, which we haven't created, and I'm gonna do that last because that's the complicated Hedera stuff, and I'll spend a bit of time going through that. And then we're bringing in models, uh, invoicing. So the first view, this is the cart view, and this is an Ajax view. So the cart view is a class-based view, and we're inheriting the template view. So you need to say what template we're using, which is template name, and it's API cart, which we'll do in the next section. Then we're calling get context data method and we are adding the balance by calling Hedera data, which has not been built yet, and the method balance. Okay, so we're passing through balance to, the, to be rendered in the front end. So that's the view there. And lastly, we've got a payment view, login required decorator. That's how you add it to a function based view. And we've got if request method equals post. I could have that as Ajax, I'll leave it as it is for now, it's not the end of the world. We get the user, 
by using a request or user. We can do that because the user is authenticated. Then we get description from the post itself and we get the amount from the post itself as well. So description and amount. We then call Hedera payment from the mixing that we haven't got yet. Pass through user amount and keyword, sorry, amount and description as keywords and we call create method. So if the payment is perfect, so this will be passed through from the mixing. So if the payment message is perfect, then we create an invoice. So we, we call invoicing, which is the model we've just created. We add user amount. So the amount is, um, is millibar we're going to be using. So you multiply it by 100,000 to get H bar. Or is it tiny but I'll have to have a look at the denominations but we're, we we you multiply the the um, the amount that's being put through in a cart by a hundred thousand to get the denomination that we're rendering on the front end the transaction ID is payment tran ID which is what we're adding the mix in and description save the invoice and then what we do is we don't need that we create a data dictionary, pass through success as a result, and the message is message, and that's what we render to, um, actually that's what we send back to the jQuery call, so the Ajax call. If it's not a, a perfect, so i.e. there's something that's gone wrong with the payment, then we pass through error, which needs to be a capital, and message payment uh, is the message that comes from the call from um, head error payment. And if not, we, we send through result error. I need to keep doing that. And, and this is JSON response data. Okay, so they're the views. L what we now need to do is we need to create a new file, and this will be called get client, okay, dot py. Now, if you remember, when we were looking at these um, pages earlier on, there is a get client was there a get client get client there we have it so there we go so in the examples there's a get client so this is what i'm basing my code on so i've just essentially just copied this and configured it for this tutorial so that is what i'm going to add into the um, sublime text now copy and paste okay so let me open this up a little bit so let's get into the juicy stuff so this is the um, this is from the SDK so like I say there's no Python SDK so we're having to tinker around with the Java SDK hence the reason why it's a little bit different to what we'd normally write in Python but it works so we import operating system and then from Hedera which we've already um, used pip install to in import uh, we need to bring in account ID, private key, and client. Now these are all um, classes that are listed in on Hedera, right? So if we go on Hedera website, where is it? Hedera website, getting started, what have we got? SDKs, here we go. And if we go into, if we go into build your Hedera client, it will then go into detail about all of the different um, constructs and classes and everything that are within the Java, JavaScript and Go SDKs. And that's what we're working with here. Okay, so you've got four test net, four main net. If you go into keys, you've got get new key pairs and go in, you go into um, you go into detail on the SDKs and you've got all of the different um, uh, classes here. So this is private key generate we are calling that in a few moments actually so yeah just spend a bit of time going for the SDKs and hopefully you'll get to understand that a little bit more but for this uh, purposes of this tutorial we're going to fire straight through so we're importing account ID private key and client um, and then we've got if operator ID not in OS uh, environ so these are the um, these are the environment variables that we created in the la in the first tutorial first section sorry so we created an operator ID operator key and we also added Java if you remember so we create an operator ID operator key Hedera network and config file here so if you can see here we're calling that class and then from string we're getting a string so that's how we're getting operator ID 
and then private key. So this is the private key that we added to the environment variables. So from string, where you're getting the string from the environment variables and from string, we're calling the private key class and we're creating an operator key. Okay, so hopefully that makes sense. So def network. So I could configure this, I could remove this. We are only using testnet, but this is this is written so that we can use the preview net or the uh, main net, but we're just using testnet. So client dot for testnet. Client network, so we're calling this function here, dot set operator, we pass through operator ID and operator key. So client is what we're using throughout the mixing. So this is essentially us. This is us. This is, um, you know, th th this is the uh, web app owner. So we're the one with the balance that will be transferring HBAR to, okay? But we do need to create a client for the um, user that is sending HBAR. So that's why I've written this, this, this function here. So config user client. So uh, we will be calling this function to create a new user. So it's very similar to this. The only difference being um, we are not using environment variables. We are passing through the account ID and the private key that we are generating in a mixing. Okay, so that's what we're doing in get client. We then want to create our mixings. So this is where the magic's really happening. So let's copy all of this, dump it in here. Let's see if we can walk through this, shall we? So we're bringing in date, time, date, time, time, delta. We've got settings, user profile and invoicing, then the models that we've created. And then from dot get client, we're bringing in client, which is us. Operator ID, which is ours. Operator key, which is ours. And config user client, that's the function that will allow us to create a new user. Then from Hedera, we're bringing in HBAR, account ID. These are all classes from the SDK, okay? Private key, client, account balance, transfer transaction, and account create transaction. That's everything that we need for this tutorial. Straight off the bat, what, let me save this. Straight, oh, save, there we go. So off the bat, I'm creating a little mix in here. So um, the mix in just has user. So we'll be passing through the user. User profile will be the user profile attributed to that user. The amount will be passing through as a keyword, description as a keyword and we'll be passing through client will be when the client self.client will end up being config user client so self.client in the class will be the user transferring hbar and client will be us so that's how we differentiate between the two okay so we then got a class hedera account so we've got an init function and what this is doing, it manages the creation of Hedera user account. So this is how we're creating um, a user account for the user that is signing up. So if you remember in our user profile views, we're calling this class in sign up. Sorry, I'll keep moving it around. It's just trying to make it easy for you to see. There we go, Hedera account. So head variable is after we call the Hedera account class passing through user. Okay, back to mixins. So we're passing through user. We're generating a private key from private key class, and we're getting a public key from self.private get public key. So this is what you must do using the SDK. Again, have a good look at the Hedera docs. Tran is account create transaction. That's what we're calling. The receipt, hopefully you can see this. So RESP equals, so the Tran, you set the key, so we're setting a public key, a set key. We set initial balance. What we're doing is once we've created the account, we're giving that user a balance of HBAR. So in a production environment, you wouldn't do this. You'd expect that the person signing up would have a HBAR wallet with HBAR in it, because without that, they wouldn't be able to buy any products or services. So in a production environment, you would get the user to add their HBAR wallet, but because we're this is just a demo, we are actually giving this user some HBAR. So we're setting the initial balance to 1000 HBAR and then we execute this piece of code, okay? Receipt variable is resp.getReceipt and client, okay? So that is the variable there. So account ID, this is the account ID for the new user, is receipt, account ID to string, so that converts it to a text string. We add the ID to the user profile, we 
at, we get the public key from self public, which is this, we get a private key from self private, and we convert them to string. So that's important. So we're converting it to a text string and we save the user profile. So by the time we've finished this piece of code, we've created a user on Hedera, we've set an initial balance of HBAR to 1000, we've saved all their credentials to the user profile and saved the user profile. So that's what we're doing in Hedera account. Then we've got Hedera payment. We're passing through the mixing, which is this up here. So we've got a method called create and that's all we've got actually. So um, when we call create, this is in the API view. So let me open that up quickly. That is what we're calling here. There we go. So the payment. So remember we're passing user description and amount through to Hedera payment and calling create. Okay, that's where we're using it. So back to mixins. Tiny bar conversion. This is conversion the amount that's passed through to tiny bars. Okay, so we're multiplying it by 100,000. Again, I'll go through the denominations in the next section, but there's a few different denominations. We need tiny bars for this. So the amount is hbar dot from tiny bars. So we now know that it's tiny bars. And you put an int, so we convert, it, convert the tiny bar conversion to an integer. The account ID is from, so we get the user profile and the ACC, which is the um, account ID that we've added to the user profile, that's the field, and we convert it to a string. So the account ID is now a string. And then we call transfer transaction, okay? So this is where the magic really happens. This is where we transfer an HBAR from one account to another. So we add HBAR to an account and we deduct it from another one. Is that right? Hang on. Account ID, operator ID, amount, one second. I always get this. No, so add HBAR. So this first one, add HBAR, that is the account that it's coming from. And this is the account that it's going to. Okay, so add HBAR transfer. So the account ID is the account ID from the user profile. So this is who is sending it. Okay, that's the account ID on Hedera. The amount is the amount negated. So that is the negative figure. So if that was one H bar that we were transferring, that would be minus one, okay? So the person we're transferring it to is us. So it's our operator ID, and this is the positive version. So that would be minus one, and that would be one. They have to be the same. So if one was negative one and the other one said two, the, the transaction wouldn't occur, it just wouldn't work, okay? So set description memo, sorry, transaction memo, and we add the description, and then we execute it with client, which is us. You don't execute with client that is in the user's client, this is the us, because we're the one who's managing this. Status, so we get the status from this and we turn it to a string. Transaction ID, so we get the record and we get the transaction ID. And then we've got if the status, so if this equals equals success, remember we're calling that in the view. Um, and then we said the, mess the message is now perfect and we return message and the TRAN ID. Else, we put something went wrong and we send a message, okay? So that's how we're creating the payment or transfer an HBAR from one account to another. We've then got another one called Hedera Data. Again, we've got the mix in that was passing through and we've got a, a method called balance. So account ID, we pass through the account ID and we get the balance from them. Okay, so we get the account balance from the um, from the user. This means that when they create, when they um, buy a product, you can then see their new balance. So it starts off at a balance, they buy a product and it's deducted. So hopefully that is as clear as mud. <laughs> so I've, I've just gone through everything. That is, there is nothing else to go through. So we've got models, just double checking quickly. Got models, got URLs, got views. I believe, believe that's it. Yeah, I believe that's it. Should we make migrations? So Python manage.py make migrations. What that will do, that will create, uh, what have we got here? Can I import redirect params from users mixins? Typical. So users views, one sec. Let's get this. So we must have redirect params in here somewhere. So find, make sure we're not calling it elsewhere. We're not, I just removed that. What 
Wonderful, so we've just created a model invoicing, created a model user profile. We now migrate that. Perfect, now if we run server, no we won't, what we'll do, we'll create a super user. Yeah, it's called Bobby, email address, it doesn't really matter. And then what we'll do, we'll go python manage.py run server. And if we now go incognito on this screen here, and go localhost, that will say no template because we haven't created any of the front end yet, but we should still have access to admin. And if we just go Bobby and login there we go so we've got users there that's the built-in user model we've got invoicing we've got user profiles okay so they're empty okay so that is it that is the back end we don't need to do any more to it in the next section we will start creating the front end of this app so we'll be creating templates for um all so everything can be rendered so if i was to log out now you'll see that there is no template, so I haven't got a user sign in. So we'll be creating all of those templates. We'll be creating some CSS and we'll be writing the JavaScript. So uh, see you in the next section. Thank you. Bye. Hey and welcome back to the fourth and final section of this Hedera Django tutorial. In the last section we um, we built the back end so we're just going to create the front end quickly, add some CSS, add some JavaScript and um, hopefully we will um, be up and running. So look at my screen here you can see this is where we left off actually so um, we have no front end so the um, URLs just don't render anything so if i was to put in sign up it'll come up with another um, template does not exist it doesn't exist so let's go into our project so it doesn't exist because we haven't created the uh, templates to do the templates you must create some directories so it needs to be templates and then we need new folder and this can be called users it has to be called users when it's in the users app and within that is that directory there that's where we'll add all of the html need to do the same here so new folder api within oh sorry re rename that needs to be templates and within templates new folder and we'll call this api Great stuff. Okay, so in users, we need a new file and we'll call this base HTML. Now I'm going to um, go very, very quick because we've got to do, um, we've got to do the uh, CSS, we've got to do the JavaScript and we've got to do all of the HTML. So. Uh, I'm not going to, yeah, yeah, this is all about how to um, work with Django and connect to Hedera and create an account and transfer HR. So the front end aspect of this is really sort of, um, it's just so that you can actually see it happening on the screen. So I'm not going to dwell too long on the front end. I'm going to quite simply take from my other screen. I will walk you through what we're doing, but um, essentially it's uh, more or less about the back end in this tutorial. So this is the base HTML. Okay, so standard sort of stuff at the top here. We've got, um, you know, we use Courier Prime at, at did coding, um, but we're bringing in the style sheet main CSS. So I'll be bringing that in. I'll be creating that file in a second and putting it into our um, static directory. So I always have a block here called extend head in case I needed different CSS for different pages. It's not really needed, but I do always have it in there just in case. Then we've got extend nav. So the nav differs depending on whether you're authenticated or not. So that will be in the um, sign in, sign up pages. Uh, we've then got um, partials logo. So what we'll actually do is new folder, 
we'll call this partials and I need a HTML file in there called logo dot HTML and what I'll do is I will just take that and paste it in there so all it's doing is got a href taking us back to account but this is important so I need a, um, a directory called branding and a logo called did logo gif so I've got all of this and I'll dump it in a static file but this is what will be rendered into the front end this is the logo that just sort of gets typed out when you're on the app if you remember in the first section of this tutorial that's the logo so we're now importing that that will work and then this is the content block so that's where all of the uh, magic will happen in the individual HTML files then at the bottom here we're bringing in jQuery so it's um, a most recent version of that then we've got extend foot and then at the bottom here we've got main.js so this will be our JavaScript file that we'll write in a few moments so that's the base HTML so if we now go new file save as and we'll call this sign up dot html we'll copy that and we'll paste so extending user base or users based we're losing static so this allows us to access static files we're not doing anything with a head but this is the nav that we're adding so we've got a, um, a sign in and a sign up uh, left button on the left hand nav bar and it, yeah it's the href is the URL so this is a template tag and this is users.sign in and sign up okay then we've got content okay so in the content this is the h3 tag we've got a container and then we've got a form okay so because it's a, um, a post request we have to have the template tag CSRF token okay so that's the hidden CRS CSRF token field the ID is sign up form, we'll be referencing that in JavaScript, and the action is sign up, which is the URL that we need to be calling. So you can see here we've got U form. If you remember, that was the user authentication form, and then we've got a UP form, which is the user profile form. They're the two forms that we need to sign up. If you remember on the first part of this tutorial when I'm walking you through the app, there's loads of fields that you need to add to sign up, and then there's a little button. And then at the bottom here, we've got these two little tags here um, rendering the errors, if there are any errors. Then we've got a footer block and that is it. That's the sign up page. So if we now save as, we'll save this as sign in. And then I'll get the sign in HTML. Happy days. Right, okay, same at the top here again. It's just what changes is active. Okay, that's, that's just an easy way of doing it. You can do that programmatically, but it will do for the app. Uh, form sign in form post and the action is home so it's just a forward slash again CSRF token and this time we're passing through a form so this is the form that we're passing through from the view so just to show you a form is this one sign in a form you could just pass through form to be fair but a form is what I've used save We've got a little checkbox. So this um, checkbox calls show password. This will be in the JavaScript. So it's a little toggle. So when you click checkbox, it then changes these from password fields to text fields. So you can actually see the password. And then you've got a sign in button. So that's sign in. And we'll save as, we'll save this as account. And we'll get my account code a copy copy and there we go okay so same again it's just on this one because we're authenticated we've now got a user account we've got a demo cart and we've got a sign out button okay so that's why the nav bar is always added into a block so it's um, it's different for each of the pages uh, this container is slightly different so we're using a table so the first, the table will show a bit of user information and then it'll have the balance so it'll show you what hbar so when we first sign up that should be a thousand hbar okay and as we buy products that will drop and as we buy products if there is a transaction that appears in the invoice table it will show the transaction okay so if i buy a pair of shoes it will show up here and the balance will be lower so that's why we've got if transaction so if we're passing through transactions in the context this table will show and then for each tran in transactions we show the id which is hidden that's a bit of gobbledygook, um, but it's important to have the transaction ID and that's what's saved in the database. 
hold on hidden id all oh, right okay then the, this is the id so um so tran.id so my bad sorry tran id is the id of the invoice okay so that's the invoice id in the database tran id here so tran.tran id that's the hedera tran id so that is being rendered on the front end my bad we've then got the timestamp and we rendered just the date but you can have time date uh, from the timestamp so it can actually be the time that it happened got description and then you got amount and then it says tiny bar okay and end for end if and then it's the closing off of the block uh, that is all we'll need in users I believe yes it is and then we need the same again in here so let's save as we'll save this in I'll call this cart I'll just take it from a cart copy paste happy days okay nav changes slightly because this is now active so um, again manual way of doing it but you can do that programmatically it's up to you um, and this is the balance of your demo Hedera Hashgraph wallet so this is the page that shows you the different products so the products that we've got is a uh, shirt pants and shoes so 6,000 millibar so I did talk about the denominations so um, one giggy bar is what's that that is one billion h bar a mega bar is one million h bar you've got kilo bar h bar you've got a millibar which is a thousand uh, sorry there's a thousand millibars in one h bar then you've got a microbar which is one million microbars in one h bar and so on and so forth right okay so they're the denominations so we're charging six thousand millibar so that would be six h bar okay in the current market i think it's 22 um, gbp so about 30 cents so they're cheap that's a cheap pair of sh that's a cheap shirt cheap pants cheap shoes all right okay but they're the buttons um we've got an on click when you click the button it calls pay with h bar and it there's a um, function in the javascript that we're going to write that will take the the name of the product and the price i didn't want to um create a an e-commerce app i could have created products and we could have had a stock no we've just we're just simply hard coding in a button with a price just to show the transfer of h bar from one account to another okay so that is the again this shows the field it shows the balance okay so this is the cart we'll save that and now what we've got to do is we need to create uh, everything in a static directory okay so what i'm going to do is i'm going to just drag a lot of stuff over here so hold on a second there we have it we've done it so if i now go to static you'll see that there's a branding directory and in there i've got my logos i've got gifs and what have you so uh, it'll probably render something there you go so this is the logo you don't really need to see that but on the when it's rendered on html it looks quite good uh, we then got some css so i won't go through all of this but this is the css that i've used you can see it's got courier prime as that's the font that we're using the logo it shows the width and things like that the side nav so this website hasn't got a top nav i'm using side nav um different bits and pieces by all means go on github and have a look at the css it's really above and beyond this tutorial so you don't really need to go through it but i've i've added all sorts of different bits and pieces so it actually looks pretty when we're doing the tutorial itself but then we've got the javascript so javascript let me open this up a little bit more so we've got a function straight off the bat called show password this is what is in the sign in and sign up html files so there's a little toggle you can click it it changes a password field to a text field that is what this function is doing so when somebody clicks that little checkbox changes it to text tick it again it's all little dots rather than a password um, this function or these two calls here this changes a submit button to show a loading uh, loading text and a little spinner and then when the ajax call is complete it reverts back to the old text so if this um, variable here is changed to submit so let's say the button says submit as its text um, when you submit the ajax call it will change the loading and then when it's finished it will change it back to the original which will be submit so which is quite nice when you're submitting a form we've then got a function called pay with hbar which will finish on that but we've got jQuery, right? So we're making Ajax calls. So that means the forms are being submitted using Ajax. We're using Django to actually um, do something with the form and actually apply the form logic. 
And then uh, depending on if the form is uh, valid or not, we then pass a message back to the front end. Everything happens, nothing reloads, but uh, except for what we tell it to. So it's done asynchronously. So this is what I'm using to submit the form. So we've got a form controls variable here. And then we've got different forms. We've got a sign up. We don't need these, so I'm going to delete them. We don't need those. I had them, that's a hangover. We were, I was, it was a bit over the top. So actually, before I go into this, what we've got at the bottom here is um, this function here is so that we can get the CSRF token and add it to the cookie. So this is straight off the Django website. So by all means, have a look, uh, but it's needed. So if we didn't have that, the CSR, CSRF token wouldn't be applied and then the post request just would fail. It just wouldn't work. So these instantiate the forms and these are the forms that I'm writing here. So this is user sign up. Uh, the form is the sign up form. So this is the ID that we called it, if you remember. And then on form submit, what we do, the first thing is the default behavior of that form is to submit the form. That's what happens in the Django form. But when you submit it, it reloads the page. It's not asynchronous. So we prevent default. So we stop that form from being submitted. That's the first thing that we do. We then call the function that adds the spinner. We get the form data. So we serialize the form data in the form. And then we make this little Ajax call. Okay, so the URL is the URL that is the action element. The method is the method on the form. So this would be forward slash, what is it called? Sign up. So it'd be forward slash sign up. Method would be post. And the data is the serialized form data. Okay, that's what we post. Then we have a success and an error method. All right, so if the form is, so if the Ajax call is success, so we, if we run through the logic in the view and we get to the bottom and there's no errors, then this is what will happen, okay? So we change the button back to success. We need to add something here, actually. Yeah, we do. So, and then it just applies a, an alert. So there'll be a little alert that pops down on the screen to say, well done, you've signed up, right? But after that, we then need to, um, we will need to have this logic as well, which is what I've got for both of them. So, if JSON result is success, so if it worked and we pass this through a message called success, then what we do is window location assign and then we basically redirect the user to the account page. Um, now that can be done, done in the back end. We don't necessarily need an Ajax call, but um, this is just force of habit. That's what I do these days. Um, and if there's an error, then it just does a console log. So, and it adds, sorry, it adds the submit button text again and it has a console log. So that's what we're doing. Ajax call, we're signing somebody up, we're redirecting them. Same goes for sign in, okay? No different, it's just a different form. So we sign in on a sign up. Lastly, we'll finish on pay with HBAR. Okay, so the custom form submit post, that's this. So we're passing through a class called use HBAR. Uh, that's me being lazy. That's because I've got three buttons and I haven't changed it. That basically, if I think, yeah, so when I click one of those buttons, they'll all say loading, which isn't the end of the world, but you can change that if you were to um, clone this repository. Method is post, URL is payment. So this is the Ajax URL that we've got in the API. And we've got data is the amount, description. We're not serializing it, we're just pass passing it through to the um, post request. And then we've got success. Error, just same again, we change it, change the code back and we do a console log. But if everything works, then this is success. So if success is passed through to the front, you'll get a message saying your payment was a success and then you'll be redirected to account. If not, it will be, um, the submit will be back to the button. So it will no longer have a loading symbol and it will have the message alert pop down, but you won't be redirected. So that is the JavaScript. There's nothing more to add there. Having a look, do, 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 do. I think that's it. Let's have a look here. Template does not exist. Let's just fire this back up. Oh. Let's fire up the server again. You can see in all of this because we've got Java. Uh, this is because of the Hedera um, SDK that we're using. So we've fired up the server again. Let's now have a look at this. Is that not working? Users.signup, let me have a look. Ah, there we have it. So um, 
the reason it was still saying that there was no template is because I hadn't actually saved the um, saved the Sublime Text, uh, the PY files. So it's all good now. So let's have a, what have we got? We've got sign up, sign in. We shouldn't have any, well, I've got a super user sign up, but uh, because it's email only, it won't work. So let's sign someone up. Let's go with uh, Bobby at didcoding.com. Let's go with uh, Fred, Fred one. Fred, Fred one. There we go. Bobby Stearman. And I'll just put one, two, three, High Street. And then we'll just put uh, Ely Cams. And I'll put uh, CB6 to NH. 0, 7, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. I'll stick a 9. Let's see if this works. Sign in. Profile is now active. Click OK. Is it redirecting? Doesn't look like it is. That's probably because the message that's posting back isn't as per the JavaScript. So um, let's have a look. So on the sign up, I'm passing back sucks. There we go. Spell it wrong. So it needs to be capital. So it's save, replace. So save and if I now look in static, just to double check, um, that's the sign. Sign up and yeah, looking for success. So that's why that's why it didn't redirect us. So um, I can now go to account, which would have been redirected. Let's see what's happening here. Well, I don't know what just happened there, but let's have a look. I don't know if I'm now signed in. Um, oh no, that doesn't like that. Um, sign in. Dot com, and let's get signed in that way. See if this will work. Right, there we go, we have it. Uh, that's all good then. So um, what that's done is it's just signed up and signed in. So I've just signed into account. I'll have to just check that bug. For some reason when you sign up, it just didn't like it. it does all of the necessary stuff in the background, but it just didn't redirect us to the account. So it should be a nice and easy bug to fix. So uh, I'm now signed up. So probably decoding, that's my address and look, a balance of 1000 HBAR. It's exactly what we want to see. We haven't bought anything, so there's no invoices. We go demo cart. That's my balance. This is the denominations. So, like I said in the HTML, one gigabar is one billion H bar, one megabar is one million, kilobar is one thousand. You got one H bar, and then you got one thousand millibar to one, one million microbar to one, and one billion. No, isn't that? That's one hundred million tiny bars to one. Um, and that I believe that is correct. I did double check that. So these are the three uh, buttons that we went through in the very first walkthrough. Um, as I click one, they will all run through. Um, I haven't changed the JavaScript, but let's go with a pair, this shirt. Okay, so we can order a shirt. Your payment was a success. There we have it. So that's the transaction ID. You can see now that um, the uh, H bar has gone down. Okay. So it's gone down by, what's that, about six, uh, just more than six because there was obviously a transaction fee there as well. And if we go back to cart, we can then have, let's go with um, shoes. There we go, it's gone down even further. So I've got some sh a shirt and some shoes. And lastly, let's go back to cart and let's just get, for giggles, let's have some pants as well. Okay, great. That looks like it works. Pants, shoes, and shirt. Okay, they're the tiny bars that could be converted to. That doesn't matter. We can leave it as tiny bars. I mean, it, 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 you can get clever and it can be converted to H bar if the denominations worked out right. So, if, you know, it could be 87 
eight, seven, four, two, three tiny bars, and in which case you'd keep it as tiny bars rather than converting it to H bars. But in this case, I've just kept it as tiny bars. Not a problem at all. This is now the accounts page. That, so that's the same. The balance is, the, is what's left after buying all of these products. You can go in and order another one. And you know, we just keep on adding and adding and adding. So we should now have four items. There we go. So that's what's happening. My um, H bar wallet will have increased. So because I'm using Testnet, you start. I think you start with ten thousand H bar every day. So you can tinker around and make calls and transfers, and you know you can use it to fuel transactions. Um, so my my H bar wallet would have increased by the same tune as, as what this user has decreased. So that is it. That's the end of this tutorial. I hope that you have enjoyed it. I hope it's been of interest and that it can get you uh, coding in crypto and um, well, have a tinkle with Hedera as well. I find the docs fantastic. It's quite easy to use. It's quite easy to get incorporated and, and um, added to a Django app especially. So, and that's without a Python SDK. So just imagine what it'll be like when I've actually got that done. So thank you very much for watching. This has been uh, fun to put together. I'm Bobby from Dick Coding. Um, I'll see you in the next tutorial. Thank you. Bye-bye.